we are going to talk about 10 most brutal torture methods ever devised in history. Number 1, The Brazen Bull. The Brazen Bull, also known as the Sicilian Bull, is an executionary device first invented in ancient Greece. A solid piece of brass was cast with a door on the side that could be opened and latched. The victim would be placed inside the bowl, and a fire set underneath, until the metal became literally yellow as it was heated. The victim would then be slowly roasted to death, all while screaming in agonizing pain. This device, gradually became more sophisticated, until the Greeks invented a complex system of tubes, in order to make the victim scream sound like an infuriated ox. This device was invented by Pyrrhus of Athens, that proposed to Phalaris, a tyrant, the need of a more painful way to kill criminals. This was done hoping to dissuade the poor population from committing any more crimes. Number 2, The Iron Maiden. The idea of mechanizing the torture was born in Germany, is exactly there that the Iron Maiden of Nuremberg is originated. It was baptized so, because from the exterior its appearance was those of a Bavarian girl, and also because its prototype was designed and built in the basement of the secret tribunal of that city. It was a kind of metal box with folding doors. Once inside the conical frame, the victim would be unable to move due to the great number of steel spikes impaling them from every direction. The arrangement of the spines, was so well studied that while penetrating in various parts of the body, they didn't hit any vital organs, so that the victim was destined to a long and atrocious agony. This machine, also named the famous heavy metal band, the Iron Maiden. Number 3, Burning at the Stake. Burning at the stake, was a very common way to execute blasphemers, thieves and witches, it was used throughout the Middle Ages and beyond. This execution was often a large public manifestation, and was usually it took place after a short time from the issuance of the judgment. In Scotland the execution of a witch, condemned of witchcraft, was preceded by a long period of fasting. The witch was first strangled, and then her body in a state of unconsciousness, was discharged in a tar barrel before being tied to a pole and burned. If the fire was big enough, death occurred first by asphyxia rather than damage done by the flames. However, this was a known fact, and the victims were usually burned in a smaller fire, so they would suffer until the end. When the fire was small, death occurred because of loss of blood, or a heat stroke which could take even hours. When the victim was hated by the population, if he, for example, raped a woman, the general populace often congregated around the stake to see the victim die. The smell was terrible and lasted for many hours or even days after his death. Number 4, The Rat Torture. A cheap and effective way to torture someone in the history, was with the use of rats. There were many variants, but the most common, was to force a rat through a victim's body, usually the intestines, as a way to escape. The victim was completely restrained and tied to the ground, or any horizontal surface. A rat was then placed on his stomach covered by a metallic container. As the container was gradually heated, the rat began to look for a way out, through the victim's body. Digging a hole usually took a few hours of agonizing pain for the victim. This almost invariantly resulted in death. Number 5, The Judas Cradle. The Judas Cradle, a terrible medieval torture, where the victim would be placed on top of a pyramid-like seat. The victim's feet were tied to each other, in a way that moving one leg would force the other to move as well, increasing pain. The time it took someone to die, varied enormously from individual to individual. Torturers, would sometimes add weight to the victim's legs, as to increase pain and hurry the victim's death. Other torturers would place oil on the device, which increased pain considerably. The victims were usually naked, adding to the overall humiliation of the torture. In addition, this device was never washed, so the torture could often lead to painful infection or even death. Number 6, The Spanish Donkey. Similar to Judas's cradle, but much worse, Spanish donkey, also known as wooden horse, was mostly used by the Spanish Inquisition during the late Middle Ages. It was a sharply angled wooden device of triangular shape, pointing upward, mounted on a horse leg like support poles. The naked victim, was then made to sit under the main board, as if riding a horse, 
and various weights were attached to his or her feet to increase the agony and prevent the victim from falling off. This device was allegedly used during the American Civil War by Union soldiers against their Confederate prisoners who were forced to sit on the donkey until they pass out. Number 7. The Rack Who could forget the rack, commonly considered one of the most painful forms of medieval torture? The rack consisted of a large rectangular wooden frame with a roller at one or both ends. Victim was positioned on the frame, his ankles were fastened to one roller and the wrists to the other. As the interrogation process progressed, a handle attached to the top roller was used to gradually stretch the limbs away from the body, resulting in excruciating pain. The ropes would pull the victim's arms and legs, eventually dislocating his joints with loud popping noises, snapping his muscles and ligaments, and sometimes even ripping the person's upper limbs right off his body. Even forcing the prisoners to watch someone else being tortured on the rack was often enough to extract confessions. Number 8. Impalement Although not one of the most common form of execution, impalement has been known to be used from Babylonian times. Records indicate that in 1772 BC, the Code of Hammurabi dictated death by impalement for women who killed their husband to be with another man. The act of impalement involves a long stake being inserted into the body, causing a relatively slow and painful death for the condemned. The survival time on the stake is quite variedly reported, from a few seconds or minutes to a few hours or one to three days. There are two different forms of impalement. The first one, longitudinal impalement. This means to impale the convict along the body length. The victim was forced to sit in the stake, which was raised from the ground. Then, because of his own weight, the victim was starting to drop. The stake pierced all of the victim body from one side to the other coming out at the end from the mouth or from the top of the neck. Now, the second method, transversal impalement. This method of impalement consists of the stake being inserted from front to back, through abdomen, chest or heart to the back. Laws, in the Holy Roman Empire, dictated that a woman who killed her newborn child should be punished by being placed in an open grave and have a stake thrust into her heart. Last but not least, death by sighing. Sawing in the half was an incredibly cruel execution method used mostly in the medieval Europe. During the process, the criminal would be hung upside down, from a tree or a gallows. Then, a large saw would be used to slices, or her body in half, starting with the crotch, all the way to the chest and head. While some victims were cut completely in half, most of them were only sliced up to their abdomen, prolonging their agony. Because the victims were hung upside down, the brain was receiving sufficient blood flow to keep them alive and conscious, until the saw finally reached the main arteries in the abdomen. In extreme cases, the execution could last several hours. In the Chinese version of this execution method, the sawing would begin at the top of the head, with the victim standing upward, causing immediate death after a few seconds. Number 10. The Breaking Wheel also known as the Catherine Wheel, this is a torture device used to slowly kill the victim. First, the victim's limbs were tied to the spokes of a large wooden wheel, which would then be slowly revolved as the torturer simultaneously smashed the victim's limbs with an iron hammer, to break them in numerous places. As the bones were broken, the victim would be left on the wheel to die, or could be placed on top of a tall pole, so the birds could feed on their flesh while still alive. This was slow indeed since it could have taken days, before the victims would die from dehydration. Sometimes, a clues de grace, blow of mercy, was employed by ordering the executioner, to deal a fatal blow on the victim's chest and stomach, to end their agony. Number 11, definitely the most brutal, hanged, drawn and quartered. During medieval times, the penalty for high treason in England was to be hanged, drawn and quartered in public. This torture was abolished in 1814, but it has been responsible for the death of thousands of people. In this torture technique, the victim is dragged in a wooden frame, called a hurdle, to the place of execution. They would then be hanged by the neck, for a short period of time, until they are near death followed by disembowelment and castration, where the entrails and genitalia are burned in front of the victim. The victim would then be divided into four separate parts and beheaded.